Mexican American Roxana Moya. Roxana is a graduate from UCLA with a bachelor's degree in sociology, and she is the first in her family to graduate college. That is so important. She is leading the way for others to come behind her. She is a social activist and an influencer. And here to share her pearls of wisdom is Roxana Moya. Hello, everyone. My name is Roxana Moya. Thank you, Belle, for that lovely introduction. Um, as Belle mentioned, I am a UCLA alumni and I am also an influencer. Now, by influencer, I don't mean that I have millions of followers. By influencer, I mean I'm the one who encourages her friends and others to reach their goals. And in some sense, I believe that we are all influencers, whether it be to our friends, your family, or your community as a whole. I am the proud child of two immigrants who came here to this country to give their children a better life. I always considered myself a Mexicana, but a broken one because I can't handle spice at all. <laughs> my whole life, I was only exposed to mi raza and to my African-American brothers and sisters. I grew up in a neighborhood where you don't have role models and you just have your local cholos. For me, my parents made it very clear that I will go to college. I never really you know, questioned it. I just knew that I was going to do it. And I also never realized how important it really is to attain a higher education. Although they themselves didn't have college degrees, uh, my parents always told me, we want you to be someone, not nobody's like us. For me, getting into college meant taking two buses every morning to and from a charter school in the heart of South Central Los Angeles and in order to receive a better education. As the first in my family to go to college and graduate, I wanna share with my peers why it's so important for us to go to college besides the obvious to get a job. Growing up, I never really considered myself American. And to be quite honest, no one ever called me American. I mean, I grew up here, but that was it. I never saw people like me in books, TV, or movies. During history, I was told that this was my history as well. But the people in these books, they didn't look like me, so I couldn't relate. Once in college, I learned that America was built on systemic racism, on genocide, and on lies. I never learned about the contributions Mexican Americans and Mexicans alike made to this country. Uh, would you believe me if I told you that it wasn't until college that I learned that because Mexico didn't want to sell their land, the American president at that time provoked a war in order to ultimately take over more than 50% of Mexico's territory, including California, and still made Mexico pay for it? Or that it was actually Larry Italong who started the Delano grape strike. And then he later involved Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, and they took this movement to a whole nother level. Or that although they had a language barrier, the Filipino and Mexican farm workers would end the day by clapping to the beat of their heart. And in unison saying, Isag Baksak, which meant one rise, one fall, to symbolize unity among them all that you erased everything. And you can only learn from these things if you take a Chicano class or an ethnic studies class. Thankfully, college allowed me to do that. They allowed me to take these courses and I think it's even a requirement now. Among learning all of this, I was thinking, why is it erased? Why is it not there? Why did I not get taught this? Well, history is written by winners and winners always have their story written a certain way, which is also a form of systemic racism because the winners tend to portray Mexicans as criminals when in reality we have contributed so much more and in return society sees us as what we are portrayed of instead of who we really are. I learned that there is a reason public schools in my neighborhood were failing my peers and I. 
It was due to the lack of resources, teachers who don't really care, and so much more that I would like to get into, but that's for a different day. <laughs> One of the biggest reasons these schools were failing us is because we were black and brown kids in low income neighborhoods, with, which meant less money. Less money meant little to no college prep or extracurricular activities. It meant overcrowded classrooms and limited books. Not only was I always at a disadvantage because I didn't have a cousin, an aunt, or any other family member at that who had went to college and gotten a college degree, but I also had to work all the time in order to financially support myself. And sometimes I had to even support my family. I remember this one time that I had three jobs all at once while still being a full-time student. Fortunately for me, I knew how to make every single penny count. Learning all of this made it very clear to me that in order to fix these injustices, the systemic oppression, my peers and I have to get educated. We have to get informed. We need to get our degrees get ourselves elected into higher positions and start to make a change to help our communities. We need to take what we learn and go back to our communities, to invest in our communities, to help them rise up. We need to go to our communities and become teachers, get elected into city council members and influence the next generation of leaders. We need to be the role models for our community that we never had and start to change the way we are perceived. With an education, we can be the next Alex Nogales, Gloria Molina, Luis Valdez, Cesar Chavez, and even Dolores Huerta. All of this was so crystal clear to me after the election of 2016. At this time, I was a senior in college on my second to last quarter at UCLA, and I was a preschool teacher. I remember when I first heard Trump's rhetoric towards Mexicans, I was deeply offended and disgusted. I couldn't believe this man was going on stage and speaking that way about me and my people. I took it very personally and I still do. The part that I also couldn't believe is that people actually supported him and people believed him. So many thoughts came to my mind and specifically the times that I was made to feel less than my white college peers. I remember when I got accepted to UCLA and one person told me, you took my spot and you only got my spot because you're Mexican. Rhetorics like that hurt a community as a whole because you, you just start to believe it and you think that you are less than. In the wise words of Mr. Alex Nogales, the way we are seen is the way we will be treated. If we are seen as less than, we will be treated as less than. On election night, a few friends and I decided to hang out. As the end seemed to get closer and it was clear that Trump was going to win, my friends and I just felt sick and we just decided to go home. I felt sick to my stomach and I just started to process everything and think about what this meant for me, for my family. And as selfish as that sounds, I also had a deep rooted fear that by having this man in the White House, it would be a signal for everyone else. And it would be okay for people to commit hate crimes against us. In fact, Hate crimes towards Mexican and Latinos have significantly increased after the election of Trump, but we never hear about them in the media. Then I remembered I would have to go to work the next day and see my little four, five-year-old students. You know, they actually knew what was going on and they were so scared of what would happen in this election. They knew what this meant. When the election results came in, I cried. And I cried with a couple of friends who, although they were never really fully affected by this rhetoric, they supported us and were our allies. The next day, I went to work. 
I saw some of my students and some of them didn't go to class. They were too scared to leave their parents. One of my students, a little four-year-old boy came up to me and said, Ms. Roxy, I'm scared that Trump is gonna take me away from my parents. And I just remember looking at him and just signaling him to hug me because I couldn't tell him that everything was gonna be okay. The damage had been done. These children were now going to live in constant fear and that is not how every child should live. And that is why we need to take action. We need to get involved to help us, such as the Mexican American Culture Education Foundation. Besides providing these amazing history maker events, the Mexican American Cultural Education Foundation showcases amazing Mexican Americans who have contributed to America and who are often overlooked by society. We need to learn our history. We need to understand why history repeats itself and how history and how in history we are often left out and why and how we are going to say no mas. No mas are we going to allow someone who doesn't know our struggles to make decisions that affect us. And that is why my peers, it is so important for us to go to college and get a college degree, not just to get a better job, but to get educated, to educate ourselves and give back to our community, to be the change we wish to see and influence the next generation of leaders. And with that, I would like to say thank you for your time and thank you for allowing me to speak about this. I know personally that growing up, I never had an opportunity like this. I never saw someone who looked like me speaking about our issues. Thank you.